An onslaught of missiles, dozens of them raining down on Ukraine, leaving nearly half of Ukrainians with no power in the cold and dark. Each missile delivering destruction and death. Just look at this to sense their dark power. This appears to be the moment that two cruise missiles were shot down over Kyiv this week. We can't verify the authenticity of the video, but watch this for yourself. <laughs> Heard an explosion. This is it. This is it. Hell. Did it explode? Yes, it's an explosion. A missile? Yes. <laughs> Can't see what's shooting them down. We can't even see what's shooting them down. They are really good at ambush. All right, you see that the, the, that second missile, and that speed with which it moves, shot down by Ukrainian air defense. Tonight, what happened when this is what happened when a missile hit Poland, and it is now putting stress on the U.S. and Ukraine. While Ukrainian President Zelensky now says he supports a full investigation into what happened, at the time of the strike, Zelensky immediately claimed a, quote, Russian missile hit Poland. CNN has learned that Biden's national security advisor, Jake Sullivan, quickly called Zelensky's office to tell him to tread more carefully, but that Zelensky was unable to get Biden on the phone. And early this morning, as President Biden returned from Bali, he had this to say about Zelensky's original claims. What's your reaction to President Zelensky saying that the missiles that landed in Poland were not Ukrainian? That's not the evidence. Out front now, the retired Army Major General James Spider Marks. And General, I want to start with you with the uh, the reporting, and certainly I, I hope this this sort of stuck with people uh, that we're reporting the U.S. is running low on some advanced weapons and ammunition systems. These are systems that, of course, that Ukraine wants. The U U.S. has been supplying some of them. Uh, we understand now uh, from U.S. officials those supplies are dwindling. Now, of course, no surprise, the Department of Defense when they heard this report, said, oh, well, readiness won't be impacted. Uh, but this is pretty jarring. What is the risk here? Well, there's a significant risk here. And when you look at it, the supplies that the United States has is based on a number of calculations. You know, how many theater engagements can they afford, et cetera. This popped up. This was not one of them. And suddenly this became the most important thing we were doing. So that, those stockpiles just came down. So we're not surprised. And in fact, just recently, I think there was a there was a, a plus up, a funding plus up to make sure that we had the high marks, you know, the 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 high the high mobility um, artillery rocket system, uh, which has been doing a phenomenal job in support of the Ukrainians, but we had to increase the amount of ammunition. So the supplies are necessarily going to decrease. I mean, this is an inevitability. The problem then becomes is you look across all the NATO nations, they are increasing their support. They've got to challenge budgetary requirements as well to make sure that they the NATO requirements. And they've got a decrease in their supplies as well. So it's across the board. Everybody is feeling this pain. Yeah, it, and obviously, it, you know, look, it's deeply concerning. We are hearing, though, from Ukrainian military uh, sources. They're saying that Putin is increasing uh, the number of cruise missile carriers in the Black Sea to three. Obviously, now their supply of cruise missiles had, had dropped dramatically. They've got Iranian supply now coming online. Um, but, but that would be, you know, really tripling their, their launch capacity from the Black Sea. What does this mean for the war? Well, significantly... Um when I look at this, I, I look at the Black Sea, and the Black Sea is simply a bathtub. There is no place to hide in the Black Sea, and there's only one exit, and there only, there's only one entrance. Yeah. So what Russia does there, what the United States does there, and frankly, that's why the United States currently doesn't have a large presence in the Black Sea. Our U.S. Navy does not like going in there for that very reason. Why Russia is increasing their presence is beyond logic in my mind, because it increases their, their yeah. risk profile, and they can launch cruise missiles from the Caspian Sea. It's going to take a little longer. It doesn't decrease the precision, but I don't understand why they'd be doing it. And, oh, by the way, the Ukrainians have had a pretty good track record going after those that presence in the Black Sea, depending upon where it's located. Right. Remember the Moskva and, of course, uh, most recently, the bridge, uh, the Kerch Bridge. All right. Thank you so much, General. As always, I appreciate you.